Headline news most affecting Chilliwack this week. Canada Border Services arresting a Chilliwack man for importing Chinese weapons. The connection with radon gas in Chilliwack schools. Meanwhile, Chilliwack school trustee and scientist Dr. Karen Bondar is up for a major cinema award. And Cultus Lake ski cross champ Reese Howden almost made the podium in Europe. Josh will have more in sports. Our special guests this week include Brad Latham, the president-elect of CADREB, the Chilliwack and District Real Estate Board, and Jean-Louis Blue, executive director of the Chilliwack Cultural Center in a brand new Chill TV segment called Make a Night of It with his very first guest, uh, Siobhan D'Souza, the executive director of Chilliwack Community Arts Council. All right, Chilliwack, let's get started our top story. A few weeks ago, Chill TV told you about testing your home or your apartment for radon gas. Now, the Chilliwack Progress is reporting that the Chilliwack School District plans to test all of its buildings for radon. Alan Van Tassel, the Director of Facilities and Transportation for the district, says there's more than 30 schools that will be evaluated by a qualified contractor. Step one is determining the right location for testing equipment and determining the budget. Radon is colorless, odorless, and tasteless. It's a gas that forms naturally from the breakdown of rocks and soil. Now, according to local realtor Jill Hall, who we've had on Chill TV and on Abbey TV as well, uh, she has been leading the anti-radon charge in Chilliwack, and the leading cause of lung cancer and studies are ongoing for links to childhood leukemia and other types of cancers. We will be on top of this story for you. Bus Drivers Union went through their two-day shutdown of transit within the Fraser Valley system, and as of broadcast time, there remains no movement in the dispute between the transit drivers and the union. Wages remain the sticky point. Now, drivers went back to work on Wednesday. However, it is not known what the next job action could or would be and how it would affect you and I. The job action actually started a month ago with drivers not accepting fares. In a Monday release from Canada Border Services Agency, they said back in January that their officers uh, at Vancouver International Airport intercepted several parcels containing large quantities of prohibited weapons. The parcels were destined for addresses in Chilliwack. They were imported from China using a false declaration. This case was referred to the Pacific Region Criminal Investigations Team. CBSA investigators arrested a Chilliwack person for suspected offenses under the Customs Act and the Criminal Code. A number of prohibited weapons and firearms were also found during the, the arrest. Then, on January the 26th, the same investigators executed a search warrant at another residence in Chilliwack, and another bunch of prohibited weapons were seized. In total, 1,350 prohibited weapons and 13 other firearms were picked up. Don't let his young looks fool you. He knows his stuff. That's why Brad Latham has become the youngest ever president-elect of CADREP, the Chilliwack and District Real Estate Board. We're going to have an interview with Brad later on in the show. Talk about what CADREP is all about and a snapshot at the current real estate landscape. Chilliwack School Trustee Dr. Karen Bondar nominated for Best Science or Nature Documentary, not at the Oscars, but almost as good, the Canadian Screen Awards. The documentary was directed by the Canada-Australia duo of Niobe Thompson and Daniela Ortega. As Bondar said on social media, I am honoured to be explaining these concepts alongside the legendary Neil deGrasse Tyson, and he's in the film as well. Last Saturday, snow held off long enough for the annual walks for the coldest night of the year. Now, depending on the location, various groups benefited from the donation of time and monies. In Chilliwack, it was for the Ann Davis Transition Society. 281 walkers, 39 teams, $56,000 raised. This was as of February the 26th. The top team were the Chilliwack Coolest Community Connectors. They raised over $5,700. In Abbotsford, it was for Cyrus Center, but it was an online event. This due to permit issues within the city, so 60 teams raised over $8,000. For Mission, the Mission Hope Center and the Mission Youth House with 109 walkers and over $29,000 raised. Once again, public art in Chilliwack is on display. The Love Lock Heart is now sitting proudly in Central Community Park off Young Road and Victoria Avenue. The initial social media response has been positive. The piece is owned by the city but managed by the Chilliwack Community Arts Council and came in with a price tag of $16,000. 
Next Wednesday, March the 8th, is International Women's Day, and Wilma's Transition Society is something very special planned. A day of pampering, beauty, and relaxation. It's an event for women, trans, two-spirited, or gender diverse. Just go to Wilma's social media for more information. The event will be held at Evergreen Hall. The 2023 Fraser Valley Women's Expo is this weekend at Heritage Park in Chilliwack, and the highlights include great shopping at over 200 exhibits, tons of free samples, live music, makeovers that are free, a fashion show, uh, workshops, food and beverage sampling, as well as career and business resources, decorating, travel ideas. You get the idea. The show is Friday to Sunday. The Chilliwack Hospice Society's 10th Annual Hometown Hospice uh, or hoedown for hospice returns on Saturday with a rip roaring good time. Community comes together for a lively evening of foot stomp and fun with a live band dancing, the barbecue, mechanical bull riding, uh, a live and a silent auction, and of course everyone's dressed up to the nines in their best denim. The signature fundraising event raises money to support the grief and palliative care support programs and the services that Chilliwack Hospice provides free to kids, youth, and adults in Chilliwack and the surrounding communities. After the break, Josh will have more in sports, and it's that time of the year for a ton of high school basketball championships. News of the Week continues with our conversation with the, the new guy on the block, Brad Latham, who is the president-elect of CADREB, the Chilliwack and District Real Estate Board. Uh, first off, for people who don't know you, and your pedigree is real estate, 60-second business card. How did you get into the business, and how did you become the president? Well, you know what? It all started off with my father, who was a realtor. And so growing up in the house of real estate, um, always watching him go out in his suit every day, every weekend, uh, that was something that I kind of wanted to get into as well. Um, also, my sister, property manager, worked for many years managing buildings, and my mother looked after rentals. So it was just kind of that house of, house of real estate that I wanted to be a part of. And uh, I always was a, a people person, loved getting out there, loved talking. Um, so I felt being a realtor was going to be a good, good job for me, a good way to go. And so I joined the team quite young, and uh, I was just about 21 running around, doing all the kind of little things like mm -hmm. dropping keys off and stuff like that uh, until eventually got my chops and then uh, later took over the team. So, For someone who was thinking about getting into the business, did you go, is there a course at university or do you take certain courses outside? Well, yeah, your first step is, is you're going to have to enroll. So yeah. in my case, I went to Sauter School of Business at UBC. Mm. And then from there, I also took a tutoring class just to help kind of uh, help you with get prepared for the tests and stuff because there's quite a bit of law questions. And also the math aspect is, is quite uh, important when you're learning to get your real estate license. You kind of actually learn a little bit of the ins and outs of a mortgage broker yeah. um, kind of thing. So the, the tutoring helped a lot, uh, definitely helps with the test. And then after that, um, you know, we tell people either go to your office meetings, whatever brokerage mm -hmm. you decide to work with. Uh, another really valuable piece is to join a team where you can learn the experience from somebody that's been in the business a long time, which is kind of the route I went naturally with my father. Mm -hmm. So um, definitely my piece of advice is to just stick near some experienced realtors when you do get that uh, get that license. You're speaking team and uh, CAD rep, Chilliwack and District Real Estate Board. A lot of people will hear this name and they'll go, what do you guys actually do? Well, CADREB is a very important thing, obviously, and uh, what we are is a non-for-profit society that's owned by the members of the board, so the realtors out there. And what we're here is to, to help provide um, education for realtors. We have mandatory classes uh, that we have to take. Uh, we have professional development points that we need every two years to keep us up to, you know, up to par with what the law is. Um, so we provide education for those agents as well as if they have any questions or anything like that, they can call the board and we can help clear those things up. And uh, also provide the multiple listing service as well. So people can send in their listings and then we'll get them on the, the internet form and then the, from there, uh, you know, get dispersed to MLS and put on websites and stuff like that. Within the Valley, you hear about CADREP, but you also hear about the Fraser Valley Real Estate Board and you put out these monthly reports and special, well, everybody took a hit during COVID. Mm. Uh, are we... Are, are, are we overly optimistic uh, over the next few months, or is the real estate industry, in, industry actually back on track, slugging along slowly, but at least moving? 
Well, yeah, I mean, we, we definitely are back on track. I mean, things were obviously pretty crazy there for a while. Um, and then we took a bit of a dive <laughs> in 2022, yeah. which would be maybe a bit of an understatement. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is now we're coming back into a market where it's more balanced. So even already, if we look at statistics that we have um, based on the last year, if we look back at February of 2022, things were still pretty crazy then. Yeah. So, you know, sales are maybe down 50% from there. But from now, what we're seeing is, is we're starting to see more sales again because the market is balanced. And so we're seeing uh, an equal amount of listings come on the market as well as an equal amount of sales, which is a good trend for us. We're in a position now where the buyers and sellers have more options. They have more uh, opportunity. So there's more things to look at. They can write offers where they'll have conditions, like things like inspection and, and mm -hmm. making sure their financing is in order. So. I think trend-wise, we're in a good place right now, and 2023 should be an okay market. So if people are looking to buy or sell right now, I think it's a good time. One other thing, too, and, it, and it's something we've been seeing and hearing over the past week or so, is uh, property tax increases. Vancouver's looking at something like 10%, Surrey's like 9%. Uh, Abbotsford, as we've, we've been mentioning the, this past week, I believe 5.48 is what they're looking at. Um, are you expecting that to, to bump hard into real into the real estate market in the next couple of months, or is this okay? Something you can swallow? It, I think it's okay. I mean, a few people have asked about it because they saw such a jump, even though the market has seemed to drop yeah. a little bit. So the old, you know, you could sell it way over assessment and those kind of things yeah. aren't applicable anymore. If anything, most places are selling under assessment right now, okay. which means that the assessments are a little high. So we might see some, some sort of correction come next time they come around, which is in July. So the, I think a lot of it had to do with the, why they were so high is because they were still working off old sales. And there wasn't a whole lot of sales between the, sale, between the peak of the market and then mm -hmm. when they actually took the the assessments into account. So I think we might see a bit of a correction there, but at the yeah. same time, you know, assessments aren't always the greatest indicator of what that house is actually worth, which is why you should have a realtor come in and yeah. give you an actual assessment. And if somebody wants more information, CADREB is all over social media? Absolutely. Great. Yep. Brad Latham, the uh, president-elect of the Chilliwack and District Real Estate Board, thanks again. Of course, thank you. And you're watching News of the Week. Hello, we have a new segment on Chill TV that I've been invited to actually do and I'm excited about that. It's an arts and culture segment and it's going to be called Make a Night of It. And the idea behind that is I'll introduce some shows that are coming up and some other events that you can actually maybe take advantage of. To start this off, what I thought I'd talk about is a play called Juliet, a revenge comedy. The idea behind this is that Juliet, it's the Romeo and Juliet story, and Juliet is not going to kill herself for no man, because why should any woman? This is on March 11th at the Cultural Centre at 7.30, and one of the things that the Cultural Centre has is a dinner and a show segment, so you can get 15 to 20% off. For I myself have invited some friends from Surrey. We're going to go to Fortitude Wine Bar, which I have yet to, be uh, to go to, and have dinner, then head to the show. But prior to that, just to add a little bit more to make a night of it, we're going to hit the Chilliwack Museum and take in the new exhibit, which is the suitcase project about Japanese internment. So that's kind of the segment that this will be about. In addition, we're also going to be in, um, welcoming guests to the segment to talk about things that are coming up in Chilliwack and the surrounding area that may be of interest. And if there's any events that you think I should be attending, please reach out and let me know. And today, I actually do have a guest with me. This is Siobhan D'Souza of the Chilliwack Community Arts Council. And what I, we have an exciting announcement, but what I thought we'd start off with is maybe just an update on what's happening with the Chilliwack Arts Council. All right, so Chilliwack Arts Council, uh, we have some happy and sad news to share. Uh, unfortunately, just uh, yesterday, uh, Dragonfly Arts and Crafts uh, Collective of artisans and artists that we had in the Cottonwood Mall unfortunately closed due to the upcoming renovations. Uh, we had, were hosting 60 of Chilliwack's finest artists and artisans within that store. It was a great little spot, but don't fret. We have other things on, the, uh, on our minds to actually make something new happen within our community, and we're excited to present that in the future. Uh, we also have been collaborating with the city. We just put up a brand new uh, art 
Heart installment, the Love Lock Heart downtown in uh, Circle Park there, um, where uh, Party in the Park and all those great events are happening. Uh, get your Love Lock and your little uh, Padlock Heart out there and love some, sorry, lock some love down there on that Love Lock Heart in that installment. It's an interactive uh, art installment. Uh, that's, um, and we want to actually do lots more. So we're looking forward to actually doing more within the city and creating more art and more art events. That's awesome. And with that, you and I are partnering to kind of start an arts incubator of sorts. And Absolutely. we're going to launch that today. And so what uh, we're doing is it's a uh, call for artists. And did you want to maybe launch into the type of artists that we need and what that project might look like Absolutely. or what our aspirations are? So we want to, we basically want to, um, create storytelling, bring to life storytelling. We want to uh, get the most amazing local Indigenous stories and bring them to life through art, through music, through acting, through culture, uh, through the, our own parks and our own recreation we have around us. Uh, we have a lot of talent in this town. We want to actually show all them off to you, uh, whether that be through music, through um, acting, uh, and through just general art. Uh, we're looking for people to collaborate, to create storytelling, from puppeteers to costumers to dancers to musicians and everything in between uh, to create a visual storytelling idea. Yeah, and I love the fact that it's um, a call out to artists. It's bringing people together um, in the same way our two organizations are coming together to sponsor this. Yep. Um, and I think that's uh, kind of a, this has been a wonderful way to actually launch that. So if you are interested, uh, reach out to Siobhan or myself and uh, we'd love to have you on board with that. And March 11th, Juliet, a revenge comedy. I hope to see you there and I hope you make a night of it uh, with me. How's it going, everyone? Josh here, back with you. We got sports. That's what we're doing today. We got a lot to cover. I feel like we've had a lot to cover the last few weeks in sports. That's fun. That's what I'm here for. So let's just jump into it. It is high school basketball championship season, and the GW Graham grade nine girls made a Cinderella run to the provincial championship finals before finally bowing out. But they had to go through Abbotsford to get there, facing the number seven seed Abby Christian in the wild card round, which GW was able to win 42 to 32. But in the final, alas, beset by injuries and foul trouble, GW Graham's small roster couldn't hold up in the final against Kelowna's Ecole Kalo Middle School, the number four seed. Coach Matt Holford said that his girls played with heart, determination, and class in the 89 to 29 loss. But regardless of the final score, I wanna to say to those girls, this is a huge achievement for you. Congratulations on an incredible run. I think you've done Chilliwack very proud. I am a golfer, and as a golfer, you can usually evaluate the difficulty of a golf course by its length. For example, New York's Bethpage Black Course is 7,400 yards, and even has a warning sign behind the first tee that says, this golf course is for highly skilled golfers only. So, like, you know what you're getting yourself into. By contrast, Abbotsford's Ledgeview Golf Course measures over 1,000 yards less, 6,100 yards from the back. But as anyone who's played the course will tell you, it may be the most challenging 6,100 yards you'll ever play. And if you want proof of that, look no further than PGA Tour pros Nick Taylor and Adam Hadwin, who both grew up honing their game on Ledgeview's tight fairways and undulating greens. The unique manner of the difficulty is why this course has been selected to host a qualifier for the 2023 Canadian Open. Ledview General Manager Brad Clapp is very pumped by the announcement, as you might expect, and you'll recall that Trans Mountain Pipeline work tore up some of the course, so this announcement is also a testament to the amazing restoration work that has taken place over the last year. If you're interested, the qualifier is scheduled for May the 12th. The BC Sportsman Show is making its return to Tradex this spring for another exciting edition from March 3rd to March 5th. This all-encompassing show showcase will cover every aspect of the outdoor lifestyle. The 2023 show will also be the 30th anniversary of this highly anticip anticipated event and promises to gather the best of hunting, boating, fishing, all outdoorsy things. So all the details of the show can be found on their social media. It was an amazing series that deserved to end in a fifth set, but unfortunately, UFV's women's volleyball team saw their season come to an end in the Canada West quarterfinals with a 3 2 loss to the Winnipeg Westman. The Westman will now advance to the Canada West semifinal series against the Trinity Western Spartans, and that will start tonight in Langley. The playoff squad ends, or pardon me, the playoff loss ends UFB's second straight season in the Canada West, in which the team bounced back from a rocky start 0-4 to finish the regular season actually level with Winnipeg on an 18-6 record, 
I'd say that's pretty good for a second half of the year. Only two more losses, 18 wins. That's pretty good. I think they'll be aiming even higher next year. After being named to the Canadian national team for the ski cross finals, the Freestyle World Cup Ski Kit Championships in Bucharini, Georgia, it wasn't meant to be in the finals for Cultus Lake's Reese Howden. He did very well, a mere nine tenths of a second from reaching the podium, still finishing a very respectable fourth place. So congrats to Reese on that. But due to warm temperatures in the forecast, the FIS Ski World uh, Ski Cross World Cup in Germany scheduled for this weekend has been canceled. So we'll have to wait and see when Reese will be on the track next. All right, that's all we've got for sports today, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, such a pleasure to be here. We're going to go now to Carrie with the weather. Chill TV weekend weather with Carrie Moore. Now, Carrie, uh, we're supposed to have more snow, but then there's this thing about warming up to maybe 10 degrees. Yes, Don. 10 degrees does seem a little bit hopeful for next week because um, it's still going to be winter. Over the weekend, we have some highs of 5 and 6, 6 and 7, but down to minus 2. And then next week, Monday, could be more snow. Sun, sunshine Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, Thursday, but it's still going to be, be pretty cold. So, Don, you still can't put away your winter boots. Sorry about that. Have a great day. Thanks, Carrie. If you'd like to participate in reporting news in Chilliwack and you have a story you think we should know about, you can always send us a note and your pictures and your video to news at chilltv.ca. We'd love to hear from you. That's the news this week. I'm Don Lane.